Welcome back Sync Ops. Continuing on with what's new in version 3.2, one of the reasons I really like making these demonstration videos is that when all that's when all the bugs appear, all the problems come out of the woodwork. I was noticing when I watched back and edited that video that under node advanced options, there were a couple of options around uh, semaphore frequency and statistics frequency, and they're both zero. That was not supposed to be, and, and really those options didn't really belong here. So now they're gone. Another thing I, I didn't really point out in during the video, but I made a note was uh, under new user values, you now have a QWK packet settings menu. This is brand new in version 3.2. You can control uh, what uh, QWK message packet related settings new users will have by default. Another thing I failed to mention was under default toggles, you have a number of chat related options now. Uh, let me see, multi-node chat echo, chat actions. Uh, hopefully uh, these are set the way you like. If not, you can change them now. You couldn't before. I also did not mention the uh, notification submenu. So these options were moved from under node advanced options. This is their new location, you know, system-wide uh, new user feedback, user number. That's where you'd set the user number for new user feedback or error notifications. Something else I, I noticed when I was watching that video back was that I think it was under command shells and I was showing, you know, just a command shell menu here. Uh, I didn't point out that you can now go left and right and cycle through like settings. And that's true for message areas, file areas, external programs. But these arrows were not appearing correct. And that was because I had the font setting uh, set to this Lucidia console true type font. And let me see. Oh, now it looks okay. Let me see if I run it again. Maybe if I run it from scratch, command shells, there. I see how it's a weird box glyph, and I think one of them had a question mark. Now they just appear as boxes. That's really because of that font setting, which I chose just to use for that demo. And I didn't notice it while I was making the video, but I noticed when I was editing it. I also added a workaround for that. So in case you just, you want to happen to use a font that doesn't have glyphs for those low control characters, specifically those arrow keys, uh, you can use dash capital A uh, to SCFG. And it'll replace those characters now with uh, ASCII equivalents. So now you get those arrows. And the same is true for like up and down. So if you go there, now you can see this, this down arrow is now uh, a V. And then you'll get an up arrow, which is a caret symbol. So um, that's just basically kind of a workaround in case you have a terminal or a setting that uh, doesn't display those glyphs. And like I mentioned, you can now go through like-minded options with the left and right, that's a new feature in 3.2. So you don't have to exit out, go select another one, exit out. If you want to compare, you can do that rather quickly uh, just by going left and right. And that's true of um, like message groups and file libraries too. But if you only have one item, then there's no, there's no arrows up here because there's only one item. But if you go like message areas, see this, now you get an arrow because you can go left and right. All right, something else I didn't talk about in the last one, but uh, did show up on the screen was this virtual subdirectory thing. Uh, and I didn't really explain what that's all about. As an example, like if you FTP to uh, say, vert, and you did like a directory and you, you see, a lot of these are names of file libraries. So if you go into a file library and you do another directory, so where do these come from, these directory names? That's kind of the question that we're resolving with that virtual subdirectory stuff. So it used to be that uh, the internal code was used. I think it was hard coded. It was always the internal code, which may or may not be what you want users, users to see. Maybe you want to use a different string. So now you have the option of choosing um, a different source string for that. It has to be something else you have configured but at least you can, you can change it. So it's either the internal code suffix, the short name, or the long name. Uh, and it'll convert it into something appropriate for a directory, like replacing spaces with uh, underscores. But you know, that way if you have a uh, you know, more appropriate short name or long name for a directory than uh, the internal code, then you can, you can change that. Another new option that uh, I didn't talk about in the last video. So for external online programs, you have this new option, uh, disable local display. And what this do is it'll change a screen setting in door.sys and pcboard.sys. And on Windows, it'll actually stop the creation of a new console window as well. 
Um, so it won't just be minimized, but not even present at all. And this will work for many external programs. If it's like a graphics, you know, native Windows graphics program, then that won't help. It'll still create a new window. But for many programs, it'll suppress the local display. All right, another option that I didn't talk about was under System, New User Prompts, Force Unique Email Address, Netmail Address. This is new. So, you know, let's say you want new users to be required to have a unique email or netmail address, so not the same as another account that's already on the BBS. You can set this to yes, and then it won't allow them to create an account unless they can supply a unique email address. Some other changes I didn't really, um, it's not really in configuration program here, but uh, as a result of the Synchronet Virtual DOS modem for Windows, I made a number of significant improvements to the virtual UART and fossil driver for Windows. It's much more complete and robust in terms of the numbers and types of programs, particularly programs that use UART for I.O. There's just a lot more accuracy in that representation or virtualization. External programs, the drop files, a lot of the drop file formats were overhauled in version 3.2. So exitinfo.bbs, pcboard.sys, users.sys, door.sys, and doorfile.sr, all those uh, drop file uh, types over went some overhauling or fixing or like range validation or you know ensuring values are within certain ranges and this solved compatibility problems with some door programs of course you know Synchronet works with 99% of door programs already but uh, this kind of you know helped uh, reduce that remaining 1% uh, that weren't compatible another thing is uh, on Unix like operating systems when the user disconnects or they're timed out, Synchronet will first send a SIG HUP, which st HUP stands for hang up. That's the first signal it'll send to an external program. And then after a short while, I think it's something like five seconds, it'll send a SIG term, and then hopefully the program will gracefully shut down. And then if it doesn't, after another five seconds or so, it'll send a SIG kill. So it kind of sends three different signals increasing in severity. Uh, finally, a SIG kill is a totally ungraceful shutdown of the program. So it's just totally um, then it can kill it with a kill signal. Um, but it'll find, try the HUP and the term signal first. And this helps with programs that uh, do something special to basically recognize when a, a user is hung up and, and handle a, a graceful reset rather than just terminating and perhaps not saving like game state information or logging, you know, the fact that uh, the user disconnected. So moving on to the Windows specific stuff, I wanted to show that there is a new user editor and on Windows and it gets launched from the Synchronic Control Panel with the uh, user editor menu options, one way to get in. And although it looks identical to the old version or almost identical to the version in 3.19, it's actually completely rewritten. Uh, the old one was written in Delphi and this new one is written in C++ Builder. Although I use the same forms, uh, you'll see these menus all pretty much look the same, all the dialogues and everything, but all the code underneath is entirely rewritten in C++. Just the uh, user editor here I'm talking about. Another thing is this events window uh, was often the only place that a sysop could find what happened with their timed events on Windows. Unlike Unix like OS's where we're logging to syslog typically on Windows, uh, most usually most, most sysops just uh, run it this way and this was not actually being logged to disk anywhere. So there's a new option, uh, log events to disk, and that will create uh, these uh, events.log files in the data directory, which has the details that you might wanna supply to me or another support giver uh, to answer questions about what's going on with your timed events, if you're having problems. So that covered the yeah main like things that I wanna talk about that I didn't get into in the last video and should have. I also wanna point you to the list of new features, how you can find them. So if you go to, GitLab synchro.net, select main synchronet as the project, go to docs. You'll find there's a separate uh, new file for every version of synchronet. And uh, some are HTML, some are text. I see, it looks like I reverted back to uh, doing text again around 317. I don't remember why. But uh, in uh, now we have this file which has all the details of uh, everything that's uh, changed in 3.20 or 3.2. And it's a moving, it's a changing list. I, I'm not done, I haven't released 3.2 yet, so there might be more additions. I didn't really talk about the new statistics file format, so these old .dab files, these are binary files, are now converted to a .ini, in the case of the daily statistics, or um, a .tab file, a tab delimited file for cumulative statistics. This uh, old editor, DSTS edit, you don't need that anymore, that goes away. Um, you can just edit the DSTS 
INI file by hand. And that's another thing I, I mentioned in the previous video about editing INI files with an editor. And I didn't mean SCFG in that case. I meant like a text editor, like Notepad even, or VIVIM or whatever, Emacs, whatever text editor you like. So when I talked about manual editing or just editing INI files uh, outside of SCFG, that's what I was referring to, using a text editor. And that's fully supported. But if you want all the details of all the changes, and I think I talked about most of these in the videos, um, a lot of the details about like specifically which new customization options, uh, you can reference those here in this file. I think I covered everything I wanted to in this video. And like I said, I plan to be making some more demonstrations about what you can do, like bulk importing of CD-ROMs and stuff like that. So I'll get to that later. Catch you later. Synchronet. 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 Big. Synchronet. Synchronet. The BBS program that I use. Synchronet. 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 Synchronet.